Let us pray with the Christ who is within us and among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer book is very clear what Ash Wednesday and Lent are all about. They're about facing our mortality. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And it is about acknowledging sin and repenting for it. I've heard it said that Lent is redundant this year. With this pandemic, we're constantly being reminded of our mortality and our vulnerability. And sin, sin is all over the place. The sin of the January 6th insurrection in our capital. The sin of racial injustice, which has been with us for over 400 years, but now is getting clearer and clearer. The sin of wealth inequality has become glaringly obvious as the numbers coming to our food pantries have doubled or tripled or quadrupled. And our sinful neglect of God's creation has brought about climate change. So I'm proposing we have another theme this Lent. I'm proposing we have another remember in addition to remember you are dust. Here it is. Remember you belong to God and you are claimed as Christ's own forever. And forever includes now. This prayer by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. should be our Lenten prayer for 2021. God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we love you with all our hearts and souls and minds and love our neighbors as ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. And we ask you, God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and our lying down, in our moments of joy and our moments of sorrow. Now, belonging to God does not preclude struggling with God. Let's look for a moment at a statement by Jesus in today's Gospel, a statement that I've always struggled with. Jesus tells us not to pray in public, but when we wish to pray, we should go to your room and shut the door. Now, for people like me that make our living praying in public, this is a harsh saying. So for most of my life, I've simply ignored it. But then I found an insight from one of my favorite theologians, Walter Brueggemann. And finally, I understood. Brueggemann points out this teaching of Jesus is a way of classic rabbinic overstatement, the type of speech that Jesus employed frequently. Of course we're supposed to pray as a community. Remember the where two or three are gathered statement? And someday we will gather together in a church while we stay faithful now to prayer through Zoom and live stream. But perhaps we need to pray alone as well because there might be some things that we want to say to God that would not be polite to say in public. Look at the words of our liturgies. Beautiful language washed with praise and thanks to God. But what if life has dealt us some unfair blows? Brueggemann says, are there times you just want to argue with God? Aren't there questions you would like to ask God that are not polite questions? I remember our daughter, Kara, when she was a teenager, asking one of those questions. She said, why is it that every time something good happens, we thank God? And when something bad happens, it's all our fault. Good question. When we go to a room and ask the tough questions, when we go and shout at God that life is so unfair, when we dare to wrestle with God, one of two things can happen. We may succeed in wrestling some answers from God. Great. But perhaps we lose. Perhaps we don't get the answers. But in losing, we meet a God who is not our equal. We meet the big God the God who's bigger than we are, the God who made billions of stars. And we realize that the task of life is not wrestling with God, but surrendering to God. We belong to that God. To continue this Lenten theme I'm proposing, I'm going to skip ahead a few days to Sunday's Gospel, the first Sunday in Lent. It's from Mark. It's the desert story. You all know it. It happens right after the baptism of Jesus. At his baptism, a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. 
Remember, at this point in the Gospel story, Jesus hasn't done anything yet. No miracles, no healing, no great sermons. But he is beloved by God. Then he goes to the wilderness, where he's tempted by Satan for 40 days. Now Mark does not tell us what the temptations are, but Matthew and Luke do. And Michael Curry has given us preachers permission to move around the Bible as we preach. Matthew and Luke mention the devil tempting the hungry Jesus with turning stone into bread. If you really are the beloved of God, you can do this. You can't be the beloved of God and be hungry. That wouldn't be fair. But Jesus refuses the devil's reasoning. Jesus holds together being hungry and being loved by God. The devil is saying, you deserve better than this. If God loves you, then you would never be hungry. Come with me and you can be full and fulfilled. Jesus has to deal with this lack of fulfillment throughout his life. Jesus is continually frustrated by the apostles. And he knows he's loved. Jesus has his heart broken and knows he is loved. Jesus is tortured to death and knows he is loved and love is stronger than death. Jesus does not need everything to break his way to know he's loved. God's love of him is unconditional. It works the same way for us. Can we have our hearts broken and still know God's love? Can we be unemployed and still know God's love? Can we have cancer and still know God's love? Can we live in the midst of a pandemic and know God's love? Michael Curry is right. It all begins with God's love and that love working in us will transform the world from the nightmare it is for so many into the dream that God has for it. You know, the Jewish people have a wonderful insight into remembering God's love given to us before we accomplish anything. They believe an angel places the soul in the body and then seals it by placing a finger over the mouth of the baby. That's why we have a little indentation over our lips and under our nose. It's where the angel's finger was when he sealed in that spirit. That's why when we try to remember something, we instinctively place our index finger into that little crevice. We're trying to remember and we're trying to remember our divine origins. We are made by God and we are made holy. A long time ago, someone poured water over your head and said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then oil was placed on your head with the words, I claim you as Christ's own forever. Forever we belong to Jesus and forever includes now. Hungry we are his, Sick we are his, sad we are his. In everything good and holy we are his. Unconditional belonging is in the very heart of God. Martin Luther King's prayer got it right. Let's remember, we are God's beloved this Lent. Amen.